worked together at one time, and um, his his great his his great given gift is is, is lunch. You know, he's terrific at lunch because he says all the things at lunchtime that you don't hear in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine he does actually. He does, yeah. And and and, it, and I tell you what's interesting about that is he says it with total passion. Oh, I know he does. I know. You know, he's not he's not acting out. You know, he's not being a lovey. He's not. Was it pink trousers and cravat? Who said that? Um, <laughs> he's not doing any of that. He just he believes it, and and you, you find yourself swept up in it. He's a good guy. It's very nice to be working with him again, actually. I saw him uh, the other night, and uh, we were just having a little chat. We're going to go out for lunch, I think, uh, next Tuesday, which is probably a euphemism for I'm going to pay. <laughs> yeah, well, is it? Uh, oh, yeah. So, just to check back on your, no, all your TV license, um, what, what would you think will be an acceptable figure? Well, a lot of people would be paid, really. No, the thing that I find irritating is the amount of old stuff that gets regurgitated. How can we be... Because if you think Morecambe and Wise was costed, I mean, you might be thinking, of oh, 70s television, Michael? Yes, deliberately. Morecambe and Wise was costed into the budgets. Okay, I know this is ITV, but it was costed into the budgets. How come in the 21st century... We're paying more for it than we paid for it 30 years ago. You're going to give up that smoking, aren't you? No. Yes, you are. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye. Terry's in Milton Keys. Hi, Terry. Yeah, You're good on morning, Talk Mike. Talk. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Are you all right? Yeah, I got a bit revved up actually when a cab was late. No, oh, no, tell me about it. I work know, in London as well. You know, what do you do? Yeah, but anyway, just... that apart, you were you were calling me about uh, the Quran. Well, uh, the, the Christianity. I mean, I'm an atheist myself. I think that's the best way to go. I think if we're all spiritual, we're probably a bit better off than all these different religions. And I think there's hundreds of religions, and if one's right, the rest wrong. But Christianity goes back two thousand years. And Islam goes back to 800 AD, I believe, so... It's about... Sorry? It's about 13, 1400 years. Yeah, um, so, I mean... So it's, it's about 600 years shy of Christianity. Yeah, so, I mean, that, they're going to take uh, hundreds of years to get over their religion, like we've got over, over ours. I mean, a few hundred years ago, I mean, I love these churches, I love looking around these old churches, but, you know, that, that's all I do with them. But uh, it was it was a focal point of uh, Britain a few hundred years ago that if you didn't go to church, then there was something wrong with you. We was burning witches at the stake and God knows what. But sure. you know, the West has caught up and, you know, we're now a secular society. And, you know, I think once they catch up, they'll probably go the same way as us. But there's a long way to go before they decide to, to give up the crown like we've given up the Bible. Mm. And there is a misprint in the Bible and nobody seems to have picked up on it. Go on. Well, if, if you look back to the very beginning, we're all descendants of Adam and Eve. And they give birth to two sons, Cain and Abel. Tricky. But, well, surely it must have meant Cain and Mabel. <laughs> because if it was Cain and Abel, we're buggered. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Thanks for the call. Mohammed's in, uh, in Bradford. Hi, Mohammed. Are you on Talk you? Sport? How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. And uh, the reason I phoned that I was listening to Steve for several hours, it was a passionate uh, show. And he showed some interest for the Quran, copy of Quran, and he was saying that he's going to buy it. And I decided that I would like to send him a copy because I do have not one, but about five copies. So I'd like to send him one which is translated into English, so that he may have a little bit more knowledge, because he seems to be quite interested. This is what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. And I'll be very grateful if you let me have the address I could send to you. 
What, then, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put you across. Uh, and before you put me. No, 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 hang on, hang on, <laughs> don't condemn me. Um, I'm going to put you across to my producer who will give you the address. Yes, please. Uh, please. Because uh, I have the address, but I don't have the postcode. Okay. And uh, that's essential that we do that. But we want to make a point before we get to that. Yes. Um, as uh, the hot topic is uh, today about the Pope, and. Uh, what uh, my personal view and feelings are that uh, Pope is one of the top person in religion and I do not know how he could able to say such things because it does not suit her. If he was an ordinary person and uh, you know, ordinary person can be sort of, you know, ignorant or without education or something. So, but uh, looking at him, we look upon at him because he is the head of the religion and we have got a great respect and love. And I think uh, he has uh, unfortunately made a mistake, which he said, and all the Muslims seem to be, uh, angry and uh, I being a Muslim and uh, whatever I have learned through the Islam and my religion I learn to respect each and every human being irrespective of their color faith religion I lived 46 years in London and now I'm living in this Bradford uh, city. And I was a regular customer at the St. Paul Cathedral. Whenever I used to go, I sat there, enjoyed, and listened to if there was a, anything going. I also go to uh, Judaism. I go to synagogue, and I respect their institute, synagogue, I go there, I sit, I enjoy their talk, and I also go to temple. I, being a Muslim, I practice my religion every day, but I do have a respect for each and every religion. Not only religion, but uh, the human being, because uh, human being all we are the same and what I have learned through my religion nothing but respect help each other and love each other this is my motive of life and I have been very successful and I have been uh, living in this country for so many years and I enjoy uh, People. It's an interesting thing you said. You've been living in this country and you're enjoying and you get respect and you get, uh, I perceive, you also have personal space from people who give you the the, uh, the room to Indeed. follow your beliefs. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Because when you start, when, when you start to, to analyse it, living in the UK, it's quite tolerant. There's a few intolerant people about, but they really stand out because the majority of people in the UK are very happy to rub along with with their neighbours. They, they're not unhappy about, you know, you can have a different belief. Yes, OK, fine. And how are you? You know, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. But it's as sophisticated as that. It's, it's so simple, but it, in its simplicity it has a... A complex issue which in other words it leaves everyone free to have their own conclusions we are imperfect but uh, I think uh, religion gives you a very good uh, uh, sort of base no I have not smoked I have not drank I do not eat pork but the people my friends I enjoy Christmas with them mm -hmm. I go to their houses but I don't have to drink wine or whiskey I drink coke Yes. But I enjoy their company, I enjoy their family, and they are Catholic, or Christians, or uh, Buddhists, or Hindu, or, you know, whatever they are, but uh, I enjoy their functions, 
celebrations, and it's wonderful. Uh, but so, so we, so we've got this happy to coexist with each other. Exactly. This is a, it's a short life we have. But how come it doesn't make it to the headlines? I do not know. It's very sad. It's very, very sad. I mean, I have never seen you. I'm talking to you on the phone, and the vibration, which from your voice is so wonderful that you must be a very good person. Well, I wasn't a very good person at... Uh, the vibration I'm getting through the phone is, uh, you know, uh, I'm learning things from you because I'm listening to you from the last 45 minutes and you uh, deal with the people so calm and collective and patiently and you obviously put your view and they put their view, you listen to them, it's wonderful. And I learn, obviously, from you, sitting on this belly for the last five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, um, I think it was in the 80s, I was driving to London, yeah. and there was a talk show on the radio, and, and, and at the time, talk shows were quite rare. Yeah, yes. And... Um, and I pulled up outside the address I was supposed to be uh, arriving at, and I was a bit early, and I just sat for half an hour, 40 minutes, just listening. And what was I doing? I was just listening to people talking, and just people interacting. It is wonderful. It's you wonderful. know, that, that's, uh, and it really, and it set a sort of flame, if you like, inside me, but, but I think we're also vulnerable as human beings yes. for believing in those who would tear us apart. And uh, this TV uh, has gone 60 pounds up. I think I, when my 30, 30. license expires, I'm afraid I'll buy another, uh, uh, what you call the to radio, mm -hmm. and put on top of uh, the TV. <laughs> <laughs> right. the, the major irritant, from my perspective, is we're, we're looking at shows which have been on four, five, six times yes, recycled. Indeed. indeed. And the costing for putting those shows on was probably true about 20 years ago, some of them were 20 years old. So how can they justify the same costing, even higher, allowing for inflation, how can they justify that? How can they even hire today? Because if anything, they should be saying, it's less money because we're putting out old shows that you've yes. seen 400 times before, and quite frankly, we're ashamed to be doing it. Mm. Basically, they have to uh, increase the salary of the directors. And oh, now the, you touched on it. Uh, whoever is on the top, they say, well, you know, I'm going to do this and we'll get more revenue and we'll pay the uh, directors than giving something back to the customers. I'm an old age pensioner. Are you? Yeah, I'm 69 now. Are you really? You don't sound it. <laughs> and uh, I'm 69 and I find it difficult to be able to live in my pension. Well, I think that's something that every generation is going to have to go through. Because just the other day, I, I filled up the car. One that didn't fill up the car, I put 20 quid in the car, and it was just over a pound a gallon. Yes. Pound um, a litre. Sorry, litre. Pound a litre. Pound a litre, yes. Yeah. You, you can tell I'm no longer 12. <laughs> <laughs> Good to talk to you. Thanks for the call. I'm Mike Allen. You're listening to Talk Sport. Um, if you'd like to be part of the program, it's 0870-08704-202020. I know, it's terrible, isn't it? It's, it's a sign of being enfeebled, you know, when you can't remember your access code when you go to the supermarket and you put your card in the slot. I say, can you put your code in, please? And you think, oh, what is it? <laughs> it's a great tragedy. Robert's in London. Hi, Robert. You're on Talk Sport. Excellent, and very, and you're very good choice indeed. First of all, um, with, with respect to religion, 
my birth certificate said I was born in 1948. Then I found out they lied to me about Santa Claus, and then I found out that Santa is an anagram of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> there was something the other day. We had a guest on um, last... Was it last night? I can't remember. And um, there was, somebody sent me an email saying that Santa was... Um, Boo. <laughs> Boo. <Yeah. laughs> no, that was the, the dyslexic... Yeah, there you go. Anyway, don't worry. Anyway, anyway, so so what are you talking about tonight? Well, I'm the guy that took TV licensing and their agent, which is Capita, to the High Court of Justice for trespass. The trespass? Yes, sir. Wow. What what, what was the thinking there? Well, they tried to stitch me up. I have TVs, but I don't watch it, and the contract is created when you watch broadcast or record broadcast TV, which I do not do. I, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm a writer and a filmmaker. Oh, yeah. So I have to have television sets to see what my product looks like as a filmmaker. I don't have to pay a license on my tools. If I watch the BBC or any of the channels, then I create the contract according to the law. That's where the whole premise that they set out before you falls yes, down. Now, this agent tried to come into our Colin Parts and into my house and fit me up with a crime that I don't commit. And the police wouldn't come, so I took them to the Queen Bench Division of the High Courts of Justice, and I filed charges ultimately for trespass and aggravated trespass. Trespass, the the Communications Act of 2003 said, and I quote, this act does not give any agent the permission to enter into any premises. Really? Yes, sir. So, how, when does aggravated trespass? Well, the way it works is, when you trespass on common parts or private property, that's just a simple trespass, which is included in your right to roam. Okay? Hang on, that's, that's an important... That, that's that, that, a, that, no, that's, but that's an important point, the yes. right to roam. Right. Now, that's not a crime in itself, but if you interrupt, interrupt any lawful activity such as originally hunting, which was lawful. If you interrupt the act of hunting when it was passed, you commit the crime of aggravated trespass, and you can be arrested by a constable in uniform. Really? Yes, sir. And then there are different penalties for that, and so on and so forth. But that is where the crime of trespass comes about. Now, if you live inside secured common parts and corridors, in your apartment building, or flat or whatever, if they get into the common parts without your permission, they are trespassing. Or if they walk across your land without your permission, that is a trespass, simple trespass. If they knock on your door and interrupt having a conversation or a cup of tea or your internet work or whatever, that becomes aggravated trespass. And on the 5th of May, Night of 2005, Master Leslie in the Queen's Bit Division committed them... I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Robert, trial. because this is an essential part of the program. I'm going to keep you there, and I'll come back to you after the news. The great news, the great news is that 0870 for 2020 is part of the program, and I'd love to talk to you. We're talking about all sorts of stuff. Uh, predominantly, the BBC's decision to up the licence fee by 30 quid. For what? 30 quid for What? 08704 I'm Mike Allen. Good morning. On 1089 and 1053 AM. Like it or not, we live in times of danger. Around the world. The city of London. Around the clock. Yes or no? From the Sky News Centre. Talk sport on the hour news. Top stories from the Sky News Centre at 2. <laughs> interesting isn't it you know it's, it's, it's a strange reality we, we, we find ourselves in excuse me david is my producer that we, we've we've transitioned and and he also uh, lives in north london and uh, we we had the hell on earth to get in and my microphone has, has, has just collapsed so i can see yes so uh, at least you've got something to play with no, it's not going to that. But what I was going to say was, sitting here in the, in the font of media action, looking at the multi-screens in the studio, it's extraordinary. And everything is Americana. And I was 
prompted that thought when you played the Beach Boys. And I was looking at that and I thought, yes. And I've got my New York Yankees baseball jacket on and my Converse All-Stars shoes. And I was thinking to myself, they've taken over, haven't they? Stop boasting. No, not at all. I mean, they're quite cheap, you know, Converse All-Stars are 35 quid or something, you know. You go and buy some Nike Airs I, I used to run on. And they're like, hundred quid or something you know it's just ridiculous but the bizarre thing is that we've sat and we've watched and, and on my screen at the moment there's jimmy carter you know um, how how many peanuts can be wrong and, and it's just an absorbing thing isn't it it just it just comes home to you and you go my god it's absolutely right we were talking with Robert about the TV licensing malarkey. The decision by the BBC to whack us for another 30 quid for stuff we've paid for and paid for and paid for and all together now, one, two, three, paid for. Robert. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, you have a... Are you from uh, North U United States? Are you from a Northern Territory? No, sir. I was born and raised in occupied Texas. So you and George Bush... No, sir, George Bush and his father were born in New England. There are more Texan nationals than Mark Thatcher. Yeah, you're right. That's right. Okay. You're right. And back to the... And, and so much for uh, know, faithful infallibility. Anyway, that's not the issue. The issue is, why are you paying for repeats? Why are we? I'll tell you why, if you want to know. Yeah, well, I'll, well tell me, because, okay. you know, I, I also write. The BBC was privatized by Mr. Burt. Sony, Siemens, Bertelsmann, Castle Communications, uh, Home Choice, Producers Choice, BT, NTL, and a few other, and Trillium, and a few other lucky companies bought the BBC without going to tender. The money did not go into the Treasury like when Thatcher did it. Are you with me? Yeah. Uh, the <clears throat> home wait, wait, just, home, just as a point at which I, 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 I would be failing in my duty. Home choice duty. the intellectual property. Yeah, no, I'd be failing in my duty if, I, if uh, you having said that, and I didn't ask you, where did the money go? Into the BBC, News 24 and BBC Digital, but that they're imposing on everybody that nobody wants. Yeah. Funny old thing about digital, isn't it? It's, well, it's one of those funny little things. It's going to be really strange when they switch off the analog and nobody buys the digital set. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not a bitter, twisted response, is it? It's no. A, no, no, it's not yeah, bitter. It's just a hardcore reality. We're going, into, we're going to go into a recession. Nobody's going to buy digital TVs. That's it. They're going to end up giving them away like they did dishes and things. Do you... <clears throat> anyway, do you... Do you, let me, do let me you get, no, you hang on. Because I, I, okay. you've raised a very important point, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's, it's, if you like, a sub-issue that no one's talking about. It's the yep. elephant in the room. Yep. Can't Recession. You, can't you smell it? Standing in it. <laughs> no, no, but, but really, yeah. th this is the big issue. You know, it's not the Pope. It's yep. not Islam. It's not... Yep. I'll tell you what the big deal is. Collapse. We're going bust. Financial collapse, you got it. Now, here's what happened. When Mr. Burt sold off the BBC without going to tender, and it ended up in the, pri in the, in the, in the share portfolios of major companies, BBC Home Choice bought BBC Enterprises, basically. Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. You well, know, you, you, you speak from a higher plane of knowledge the, than myself. Well, I had a lawyer look at me and said, "Good God, you know more about this than any lawyer in this country." And I would do when so somebody tries. Why you're still on the air? When somebody tries to stitch me up with a crime that I don't do, I take it with it personally. So anyway, BBC has to rent back everything to stay on air. And if they want to run a Morecambe and Weiss program that was produced for the BBC, they have to actually pay Home Choice to put it out on the network. Because these people paid money to the BBC for the property, now the BBC is in a leaseback mode. The nation's assets were sold off. The nation's assets were sold off? Yes, sir. No, 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 I'm just trying to get this, the perspective on this. The nation's assets were sold off? Yes, sir. Access to that, yes. which was the culture of the country... Yes, sir. It's now privatized. 
that doesn't seem fair, does it? Um, it I'm, I'm talking it's from... The, a... it's, the biggest un it's the biggest open secret and swindle of the last 10, 15 years. So the money... Yes, sir. ...was given to who? The companies that bought the intellectual property, the offices, the transmission facilities, the lot, everything. So we, we have this multi-headed hydra. Yeah, this which is now called the BBC Trust, but the BBC Trust is empty. That's why they sacked the entire Board of Governors 18 months ago, not over the Gilligan-Kelly affair, because of their connections to the companies that own the BBC now. It's an extraordinary situation, isn't it? I mean, especially um, for, this, for this territory, this, yes, this country, which is so rich in history. Yeah. And so influential around the world. Yep. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that they were right in their influence, but they it were... Was just, it was just the ethos of Earth colonialism. That's right. And, uh, and suddenly it's been sold off. Yeah. It belongs to someone, somewhere. It belongs to a shedload of different companies. Sony, Siemens, Bertelsmann, Castle Communications, Home Choice, Trillium Land Lease. They just had to pay half a billion quid off to get out of one of the BBB deals <clears throat> with Trillium downtown. <clears throat> Forgive me. <coughs> Do you know, you're the sort of guy that they make television programs of. They still yeah. produce. That's called producer's choice. <laughs> that was this, remember, remember they were talking about the sweetheart deals about ten years ago? Oh, when, yeah. Well, uh, when uh, the uh, producers cuffling, were, uh, cuffling deals? Yeah, it? sweethearts. When, they were, when the producers were moving out and setting up companies so the BBC would hire outside independent companies That's to right. produce. That's right. And, that's, uh, and all of us in the industry were saying, hang what? on a minute, this is a bit shaky. That's exactly what happened, but that was the beginning of it. And then, in the dot-com bubble, in the middle of all that, everything was put up for sale on the quiet. They were bought, it, let's say, arguably cheaper than what would have happened if there had been competitive tendering. And the entire BBC infrastructure was sold off. And the money went into the BBC and not into the Treasury. At least when Thatcher sold the railroads and and the airlines and the British gas and everything else, she put it to tender and put the money in the treasury. It didn't happen with the BBC. It's an interesting perspective. It's not for, a, it, it, out, it, it is a reality. It is called privatization on the quiet. Yes, absolutely. But it, it's, it's, you know, those, those situations. Once you understand that, then you understand the lot then you understand what, exactly what's going on with the BBC. Yeah. And Fiona Bruce is getting a half a million quid a year to read an auto cue. But she reads it so well, doesn't she? Yeah, oh boy. Well, go to bbcresistance.com or <laughs> tvlicensing.biz and you can read about all the dirty tricks and all the dirty tactics. Just recently, arguably because of my case, the National Statistics Office, whatever it has to do with them, decided that the license fee is now a tax. And they're trying to say a tax collector has implied consent to trespass and aggravate trespass. Wrong. Yeah, because the retrieval of that money, if it's a tax... Yep. You can run it off on your income tax. <laughs> 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 That's the great part of that. Nobody knows about that yet. And I thank you for letting me tell everybody nationwide that the net must gain of zero now. It's good to talk to you, Robert. I, I, I love a rebel. Oh, well, it's just, it, when they tried to stitch me up, I just won't have it. No, well, I tell I you what, you next should. time you're not having it, yeah. call me. Yeah, I did. I just did. It's been, eight, it's been ooh, 20 months now, and uh, it's, I'm going to the ECHR to appeal it, but uh, BBC, BBC licensing biz, you can see all the frauds and everything else right there. Good to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thanks yes, for being a rebel. Thank Thanks, you. Robert. Bye -bye. I'm Mike Allen. This is Talk Sport. If you'd like to be part of the program, love to hear from you. Um, is this email? Yes, it's email. An email from. Uh, oh, I hate it when people don't put their note. It said, "How lucky that you're talking about the Pope. Try making fun of Muslims, and Christians are so strong in their belief that they can take it." I think. That's an essential truth, actually. It's an essential truth that if you believe, and you truly believe, then you're not vulnerable to the the tides and vicissitudes of pop culture. Hugh in Wales was so moved, he said, Hello, Mike. 
will have loads of that man all over the country, but if he pays me 70 pence or 26 pence an hour, he can go home because I can't... Okay, it's all going terribly well, isn't it, really? Uh, I'm going to be talking to Pauline, Julian, Lisa, Debbie, Jerry, and Kath in just a moment. I'm Mike Allen. This is Talk Sport. Talk Sport. Radio which specialises in football, fighting, and phone calls. Talk Sport. I was just getting down with my bad self there, and uh, it was great. I, I was actually standing. Quiet. What? Pauline, what? Oh, hello. I'm telling them to be quiet. I've been babysitting my grandson and my daughter's just come in. How old are they? Well, the grandson... No, 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 no I mean the children. Two. The children. The children. Oh, he's two. He's asleep. Two? Yeah. They're Isn't listening it? in the kitchen on the radio. So, so why were you telling them to shut up? Because they're talking in there. I can hear them. Oh, your daughter was talking? Yes, to my grandson. Oh, I thought you were talking to, 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 to your grandson. <laughs> Two years? Isn't it extraordinary? Something so small and so young can make so much noise. No, he's too easy to sleep, but I've got a Yeah, I know, here. but as in a general observation. Oh. You know, two-year-olds, where do they get all that noise from? They, I think there's a fundamental...